since it was the Muslim holy month of Muharram, which is especially significant for the Shia, we decided to head to Sadr City. It's Friday, we're going to check out the big prayer. Apparently it's a sight to be seen. Everybody prays on the streets for a huge distance from the mosque all the way out. Now, just a few years back, the idea of Westerners paying a little visit to Sadr City would have been unthinkable, as it was the heart of the insurgency against the American occupation. The home of firebrand cleric Muqtada al Sadr and his Mehdi army. Even now, it took a lot of work and a Mehdi army escort to get us in. It's supposedly forbidden to fight during the month of Muharram, but with heightened Sunni Shia tensions, the Iraqi army thought it was a good idea to have the bomb squad present just in case. More than 13,000 people turned out to pray and to listen to a cleric who influences the attitudes of an even greater number of Iraq's Shia majority. How do you feel about the westernization of Iraqi youth since the American occupation and since they've left? إنه الهجمة كبيرة على العراق وهذه الهجمة تمثلت بنقل الثقافات الغربية الفاسدة هنالك ثقافات سيئة وثقافات أراد العدو أن يوصلها إلى العراق والغرض منها إفساد الشاب المسلم أتمنى من الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يعم الخير والسلام. The cleric made it clear that getting the U.S. out of Iraq wasn't enough. He wants to eliminate American influence of any kind. We headed back to the neighborhood of Karada to meet up with Walid and get a tour of his old haunts. Hey, welcome to Iraq, buddy. Welcome home. <laughs> Thank you. Walid wanted to check out across Akata's old practice space. That is, if we could find it. It was a strange feeling walking around, considering the last time I was here, I wasn't even allowed to get out of our armored car. It's been a very, very long time since I have last walked the street. Right. This is uh, filled with memories of starving nights with the band beating the shit out of the instruments, walking out and trying to figure out how the fuck are we going to go back home. This is like basically 10 years ago. Yeah. This is it. It's been rebuilt. Yeah. Complete the change now. It's like art galleries. Yeah. If we hadn't been sure this was the spot, we would have walked right by it. The practice space got completely bombed out during the war, and today it's unrecognizable, which I guess is a good thing. The area changed so much that it looks completely different. Walid wanted to see if his childhood home was still standing, but on our way there, we were reintroduced to one of the most notorious features of Baghdad, checkpoints. Car bombs are such an issue in Baghdad that hundreds of the checkpoints that were originally established by the American military are still in place today. Look at this fucking shit, man. Have you noticed every street has a checkpoint? Every area has a checkpoint of entrance and exit. It's so sad, you know, like literally you have to plan your day to the T. Because it slows everything down. Yeah. Like the... Not only does it make getting around a nightmare, but doing anything other than staring straight ahead and hoping you get through can throw your entire day into a tailspin. Put it down. What are they saying? You can't film? Yeah, he's like, don't film near a police patrol. Okay. Yeah. After inspecting our press credentials and undergoing a thorough search, we were allowed to slowly make our way to Walid's old house. Everything is blockaded. You can't really access the house or the neighborhood. So we had to turn around, go all the way back, and then come through here. Did it get bombed, this neighborhood? Yeah. And it looks pretty fucking different. That is pretty fucking insane. This was this used to be my old library.
It's like a fucking junkyard, man. Right before Walid left the country, he received a series of death threats. His work as a fixer for foreign journalists and as a member of a heavy metal band made him a target. I'll show you right here. So at six in the morning I would leave and there was a note right here, an envelope, right here. And when I opened it, it was a very, very frank letter of, we shall cleanse the soil of our country from the stench of people like you. So I went kind of crazy and I went into the street and I started screaming and yelling. Like, if you're a man, just come up right now. I came back after two weeks and I left at a different time this time, you know, in the morning. And there was another one of those. Waiting uh, for you when you walked. Waiting for me. So what I realized is that the person who had dropped it had to have been watching over from somewhere around here where he can see me leaving the apartment and going down. And that's when I knew that the danger was very, very imminent on my family because of me. Right. So yeah, three days after that, I was in Jordan. But the death threats against anyone who's not on the straight and narrow continue to this day. And as we would learn, these threats are not empty. معنات إنه عالم ما يعرفون هالموسيقى. إيه أنا أكثر أنت تهددني إحنا في هذا الموضوع. واحد يشوفه لازم قتال يمشي بالشارع نفس الموضوع. لحد الآن هذا موجود.